What's up guys, Tech James here. Welcome back to a new tutorial video. Today's guide is going to be all about upgrading your Xbox One's hard drive into an SSD. And this tutorial is mainly focused on the Xbox One X and also the Xbox One S. The Xbox I'm going to be using in this video is the Xbox One S, seeing as because I had one myself. And my one had a faulty hard drive, which is the main reason why I decided to upgrade it. Basically, I needed to replace the hard drive anyway. So I thought I might as well just upgrade it to an SSD. By doing this, for sure, you're going to increase load times on games. It's also going to be a lot faster while you're browsing the home screen. And yeah, just upgrading your Xbox from a hard drive to an SSD is just a really good idea, to be honest. Also, don't worry about any of your old data. You're not going to lose anything. As long as you have a Microsoft account signed into your Xbox, which I'm sure you do, you will be totally fine. As soon as you sign into your account, you can reinstall all of your games and get back all of your saved data. You can always back up your Xbox if you want to. Maybe that's a good idea. For me personally, I didn't have a choice because my hard drive ended up breaking. Long story short, my Xbox got knocked over and fell onto the floor. So yeah, that's always brilliant, isn't it? It wasn't my fault, but there you go. There's nothing I can do about that. So yeah, let's go and upgrade my Xbox. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be doing this just because you want your load times to be faster. But when I turned on my Xbox One, yeah, this is what it looks like. I was stuck on the green loading screen. I think I left it for an hour and it just stayed like this. And I thought, okay, hang on a second. Something's gone wrong. Maybe it was an update. Maybe it got corrupted. Maybe the fact my Xbox was lying on the floor was probably not a good sign. Anyway, I plugged the hard drive into my PC just to sort of test it and it didn't even pop up. So there you go. That's proof my hard drive got completely damaged. It wouldn't connect to Windows. I tried it on a couple of computers and yeah, it's completely dead. You're probably wondering how I got the hard drive out. So yeah, let me show you. The first thing you want to do, guys, is of course, make sure your Xbox is turned off and disconnected from all cables and wires. You want to go ahead and turn it around and you see this small little Xbox sticker? Yes, I would recommend removing it and peeling it off. And that's because we need to take the base plate off. Now, I just want to say getting this base plate off was so frustrating. You're probably better off sticking like one of those Lego separator tools if you have one of those. I've seen quite a few people on YouTube use screwdrivers, but I wouldn't really recommend that. You can crack it kind of easily. Anyway, I finally got it off and this is what it's going to look like. The main thing you want to do here is take out all of the green screws. So as you can see, this is what they look like and they're pretty long. Uh, you mainly just unscrew the bottom bit, then pull them out. That should be easy. There is a few of them, so I'm just going to speed this up for you guys. I think there was like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe in total. So here we are just moving on to my final one now. And yeah, that is all of them. Once you've taken all of the green screws out, what you want to do, guys, is flip your Xbox over. And from here, if you're careful, you should be able to bend the plastic just a bit in order to pull the lid off. So as you can see, I just bent it from side to side, just wiggled it a little bit and it came off. So there we go. Now your Xbox is going to be looking like this, but we're not done just yet, guys. You want to pick it up. You want to go to the sides. And can you see you have all of these little motherboards that are clipped on? This one right here, I believe this to be the Wi-Fi sort of chip, the little Wi-Fi motherboard that is plugged in. Now, I just want to say these ones are not a Phillips head screw. They are actually a Torx head screw. So if you've got one of those screw kits, you should be fine. It's fairly common. Quite a lot of those like security style tool kits have plenty of screw drivers for dealing with these. I'm guessing most of you guys watching this video probably have a tool set that should be capable of taking these out. And yeah, this little Wi-Fi chip motherboard thing does pull out, so it disconnects. It's got this little like pin board piece at the back, so make sure you pull that out carefully. Don't bend any pins, of course. Now, if you just flip it around to the other side, guys, we have got a few more of these motherboards to take care of. Yes, we have this one right here, the one that says Microsoft in white text. We're going to be taking this one off next. So this one has four screws, and again, they're like those Torx head screws, four of them in total. We're just going to go ahead and take all of these out as well. Once all of those screws come out, it should be fairly loose. So just give it a gentle pull and that should come away. There you go. So that disconnected quite nicely. And once you have those two little motherboard pieces off, the Wi-Fi chip and the front buttons, you want to go ahead and you want to pull up this metal part. Now it's still going to be screwed in. I was watching some Xbox like uh, dismantling guides and my Xbox was slightly different to other people's, which was kind of interesting. But can you see here, guys, there's like three screws at the front that's still holding my bracket on. A lot of the guides I saw online, they didn't contain those. So I was kind of surprised at that. Maybe they had a slightly different model to me. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you want to take out these three screws if they're there for you. Interestingly enough, they were actually the same screws that were holding the motherboard parts in. So yes, they are torque screws. So there you go, just unscrewing the final one. And this big metal part should now easily come away. You should be able to just disconnect it, you know, just 
take it off there there you go it came away nicely and now guys you have opened your xbox so if you want to give your xbox a good clean here is your perfect opportunity we're going to take out the hard drive though and to do that guys you want to flip your xbox over you want to go and get a different style of torque screw and you want to take out all of the screws which are holding in the hard drive so there's one here just in the middle make sure you don't miss that one then there's another one just over here to the left hand side well depending on what side you flipped your xbox over on i guess so this one's like quite low down i think there was like a number four mark or something just below it c4 or something and then under b2 you want to take out this screw as well so these are all of the three screws which are holding in the uh, hard drive plastic casing so once you pick it up and you flip it over be a bit careful because your hard drive is probably going to start flying out but as you can see yeah the whole plastic case has sort of come out now and so there you go that's basically how you do it of course you've got to disconnect it from the motherboard as well so just make sure to pull that out to be fair you can leave it plugged into the motherboard if you want to and you could just take it off the hard drive but i decided to take it off the motherboard because that was just easier for me so disconnect the sata and also disconnect the power cable as well and so there you go you've now successfully removed your hard drive we're not done yet though because we need to remove this hard drive which is my faulty one we need to remove it from the plastic casing so we're just going to use a phillips head screwdriver here and we are going to take out all of the screws which are holding it in there is four in total so there you go jump cut to the final screw and once i take this one out i should be able to take off the plastic case and there you go this hard drive is completely dead so i'm probably going to label it as dead in a minute but make sure to disconnect it from this little hard drive bracket of course this is the sata connection be a bit careful for some reason for me it was really stuck on there but yeah i was able to pull that off and so now guys i think it's time to add in my ssd now before you put the ssd in your xbox i would recommend just checking it's been formatted to the ntfs format so what you can do is you can plug it into your computer if you've got one of those like external drive cables and if you open up create and format hard disk partitions it should pop up here you're either going to have to initialize it or you can just format it it should pop up as like a blank drive so don't get it confused with any of your current drives but yeah right click format it go through the setup wizard all you really need to do here is make sure the allocation size is the same and then obviously format it to ntfs you can label it anything you want i'm pretty sure yeah it's pretty simple so here we are guys as you can see i've got my ssd and i'm going to replace it with the hard drive so we are going to plug this into the sata connection or the hard drive connection whatever you want to call it i got this ssd off ebay it was a refurbished one and it was actually very cheap so i got a pretty good deal you guys should know the rest of the steps by now to be honest obviously we've got to go and screw it back into this case and then we've got to put it back in the xbox so here we are just plugging it in always be careful when you plug in ssds you don't want to damage any connectors or anything then you just want to nicely sit it in the case it shouldn't clip in or anything it should just sit there but obviously once we put the screws in it's going to hold it in place anyway and then yeah the rest of it's pretty much common sense you want to put your xbox back together basically like undo what we just did or you know re i don't know just put it back together don't forget to put all of the screws in this is exactly what your xbox should look like once you put it back together obviously i'm gonna skip the reassembly because it's pretty straightforward and then yeah you just want to get your plastic case and you want to clip it back on use a bit of force sometimes they're kind of hard to put back on but honestly it's nothing compared to taking it off taking it off is always so difficult and so then once the xbox is back together go and get a usb or an sd card with a usb adapter and we need to plug this into our pc so what we're going to do now guys is prepare our usb or sd card with the xbox software so yeah here i am in my file explorer basically and as you can see i've got my sd card plugged in yes this does work on sd cards just make sure you've got one of those little like usb sd card adapters what you want to do guys is select it and you want to format it now just remember guys when you format something it will actually erase all of the data so you want to right click you want to scroll down and click on format it's going to pop up with this little window you basically just want to do default allocation size and you want to change fat 32 to ntfs and for the volume label you want to put in osu this means offline system update and what we're going to do guys is click on start we are going to click on ok just keep in mind if you've got any pictures files games whatever on here it's going to delete it so back them up beforehand maybe just put them in your documents or whatever so let's go and format it there you go and now if we go onto the xbox website we can actually get the software that we need to copy across onto our usb i'm going to link this down below for you guys but yeah we're using the uh, offline system update because obviously we're going to want to update without our xbox connecting to the 
Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, there's one thing I needed to mention. Uh, your USB or SD card must have six gigabyte of free space. We already formatted it to NTFS, so we should be good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the offline system update file. So we're gonna scroll down and we are going to click on this. Okay, so for me, it's gonna take around three minutes and the file size is 6.4 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. So I guess you need over six gigabytes really. Maybe eight should be fine. Most of you guys have probably got a USB that's over eight gigabyte though. So yeah, I'm gonna wait about three minutes, then mine should be done. It could potentially take longer for you. Um, yes, yeah, so you're just gonna have to wait for this to download basically. My file just finished downloading. So let's go and find it in the downloads folder. So yeah, go on this PC, downloads, go and find it. What you wanna do now is right click and extract it here. I've got WinRAR, you guys might have the normal like Windows version, but if you guys just click on extract to OSU one, that should be good. Then just give it a few minutes while it extracts everything. And then once it's done guys, we're gonna go into the file folder and you see this file, it's called system update. Well, yeah, you wanna drag and drop that onto your USB. Literally just put it on the root. So just drag and drop it across. It's gonna calculate it for you. I think my SD card's a bit crap to be honest. So there you go, it's gonna take about five minutes, but I'll be back when it's done. So once that's done guys, and it looks exactly like this, it's time to plug it into your Xbox. Now excuse my Xbox for looking a bit dodgy here, but as you can see, I have got the USB plugged in. I plugged it into slot one. I don't think it really matters to be honest. The reason why my Xbox is looking a bit weird is because I left the plastic case off because I cracked a bit, so I had to glue it. Anyway, what you guys wanna do from here is make sure your Xbox is plugged in and we are going to do a special trick. We are going to hold the reset button, then we are going to press the Xbox's power button. This should actually make a noise. So yes, make sure you're holding the reset button, then go and press the power button once. And if you carry on holding the reset button, it should turn on and boot into a special menu. And on the special menu guys, yeah, you probably guessed it. We are going to be going on this one, offline system update. Update this Xbox using a USB device. So that's what we're gonna select. Your TV might turn on and off a couple of times, but it should say updating. And yeah, you've got to sit tight until your Xbox is ready. Honestly, this did take quite a long time for me. It had like three steps and yeah, I was just waiting for this thing to update for ages, but eventually it was fine. So, you know, it was worth the wait. So yeah, be patient. That's all you can do, honestly. And I'll be back once this is done. So once it finished loading, it brought me to this screen and you can get the Xbox app on your phone. I did notice it's kind of useful for like installing your Game Pass games. I don't know if you guys use that. But yeah, from here, you just want to go through the setup. Make sure you sign into your account, by the way, and enter in all of the correct information. Because if you do that, you can reinstall all of your old content. And yeah, you won't really lose anything. And if you backed up your Xbox beforehand, then yeah, that's even better. And yep, after that, I was in. Games worked. I was able to reinstall everything. So I got Skyrim, Atomic Heart, Halo, all of my games. As you can see, it was still installing like the official Xbox stuff. So, you know, it does take a while. Maybe I'd recommend leaving your Xbox on for like a couple of hours to get all of the apps again, to get all of the games. And yeah, honestly, I was pretty happy because I fixed my Xbox and it didn't really cost me much money. And of course, now it's a lot faster because I've got an SSD. So that's awesome.